Hello students, once more, this is the period for mathematics. We will start from the assignments given, those five problems. We will start from there, and hopefully after that, we will touch the other big families of fractions. The decimals and the percentages. First of all, the solutions to the assignment. Question number one said, find the sum of two three quarters and two four fifths. Then the second aspect of that same number says, find the difference between the sum and six. So from the word problems that we gave the other day, the, the highlights, the words that are very important, which we have to note before we go on, we talked about sum, which implies addition. We talked about difference, which involves subtraction. So this is two processes in one. We add and we subtract. So let's take the first aspect, the first process of addition. The sum of two three quarters and two four fifths. So that will give us sum of two three quarters and two four fifths. We want to get this down first before we go to the subtraction aspect. As we said the other day, these fractions written on the board have whole number portion and the proper fraction aspect. Therefore, they are good examples of mixed fractions. So in other words, we are adding mixed fractions. First of all, consider the whole number portion. We we'll now have two for the first, two for the second. Then after that, we consider the proper fractions aspect. And to consider the proper fractions aspect, we've got to look at the denominators of the proper fractions in these mixed fractions. The first one was three quarters. The denominator there is four. The second one is four fifths. And the denominator is five. So we must look for the LCD, least common denominator of four and five. And that will give us 20, 20, 20. Then we will now get the equivalent fractions of three quarters and four fifths in terms of that common denominator, 20. The equivalent fractions will be gotten like this. The denominator of four will divide 20 and give us five times, but it must multiply the original numerator, which is three. Then plus... The denominator of the second one, which is 5, must divide 20 and give us 4 times. But this 4 will multiply the original numerator, 4. In other words, this gives us 4 whole number. Multiply this out, 15 plus 16, all over 20. We have to add first what we have there. And that will give us 31. 31 over 20. If you look at this, some people might make the mistake of saying that they now have a mixed fraction. No way. Because we have the whole number portion, but this is an improper fraction aspect. Therefore, it's not a mixed fraction. To get a real mixed fraction, we have to reduce this improper fraction to its mixed fraction. And that will give us 4 is here, plus we want to finish with this aspect. 20 dividing 31 will go there once. We subtract 20 from 31. We have 11 all over 20. If you put these two together, you will be having 5 whole number, 11 all over 20. That is the sum of 2 3 quarters and 2 4 fifths. We have finished that aspect of sum. Then the next, next aspect is the difference. From a given number, and the given number here is 6. Therefore, difference, difference from 
6. That's where we are. So it therefore means we are going to take away what we have now from six whole numbers. And that will give us 6, take away 5, 11, all over 20. You see, the first one is whole number, no fraction attached to it, 6. And the second one has five whole numbers before its fraction. So let's consider the whole numbers first. 6 take away 5, that is equal to 1. Then after that, take away 11 over 20. Now, this one whole number here, its actual value will be determined by the denominator of the fraction there. So we must have 1 and 11 over 20 have the same denominator. And the same denominator will be 20. Therefore, what we have here now is 20 over 20 plus, I mean, minus, take away 11 all over 20. And this will be equal to common denominator of 20. That's what we have. Then on top here, 20, take away 11. 20, take away 11, what do we have? We have put one off two here. Down there, you have 10. 10, take away one. That is 9 all over 20. That is the final solution for that particular number one. I know that most of you got this exactly like that. So congratulations for that. But those of you who didn't get it that way, you have seen that the problem is broken into two parts. Sum and difference. Sum the numbers first. When you sum, you get 5 whole number 11 over 20. Now difference from 6. That means 5, 11, 20 it's less than 6. So you subtract the smaller one as we agreed the other day from the bigger one. So that's what we have for that number. Congrats to those who got it. Let's go to the second number, number 2. Second number, number 2. Let's look at the second number, number 2. Now in number 2, let's read the question once more. It says, a certain girl spends a quarter, that is one quarter, of her pocket money on Monday. And three-eighths of that same money on Wednesday. Then they are asking us, what fraction of the money is left? What fraction of the money is left? The whole money is one whole number. One whole number. So we start the solution like this. Whole money, whole money is equal to one whole number. Then total fractions spent Monday and Wednesday. So we come here, total, total fractions Spent on Monday and plus Wednesday, Wednesday. So these are two days that this little girl operated on her money. Monday and Tuesday. What fraction did she spend on Monday? A quarter. A quarter. So this is going to give us a quarter plus what fraction did she spend on Wednesday? She spent three eighths. Three eighths. Three all over eight. Now we want the total. That means addition is involved. And uh, we shall look at the fractions and consider their denominators and get the LCD, least common denominator. The least common denominator here again is 8. So 4 will divide 8 and go twice, but this will multiply the original numerator there as 1. Plus 8 divide 8, 
give us once, but it must multiply the original numerator there three. So if we do, we shall now have two plus three all over eight. If you solve that, that will give you five eighths. Five eighths. That is the total fraction spent uh, togetherly for these two days, Monday and Wednesday. Therefore, what fraction is left? Therefore, fraction left. Fraction remaining. Fraction remaining. Remaining. That will be equal to one whole number, take away five over eight. Here, as we did in the last uh, problem, this one whole number, its denominator will be determined by the denominator of the fraction that is already there, the proper fraction there. The denominator there is 8. Therefore, this our one whole number now will become 8 over 8. Remember that we say that a fraction is numerator over denominator. And we agree that when the numerator is greater than the denominator, you have an improper fraction. But when the numerator is less than the denominator, you have a proper fraction. But what if when you have the numerator equal to the denominator? That gives you a whole number. And that's what we have now. So from that, we take away 5 eighths. 5 eighths. Common denominator there is 8. So this will give us 8. Take away 5 all over 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 over 8. That is a fraction of the girl's money that is remaining. What did we do? The whole money that the girl has is one whole number. On Monday, she spent a quarter. On Wednesday, she spent three eighths. Therefore, what is the total fraction spent for the two days? You add. And when you add, that will give us five eighths of the money was spent in these two days. Therefore, what remains is you subtract what has been spent from the original. Original one minus five eighths, and then you reduce, and that gives you three eighths. I know that most of you got this because this is very direct and simple. All right, we shall remove this and go on to the next number. The next number. We've taken two out of the five. So how many remaining? Tim. Tim O T. Keep quiet. I have look this way. How many remaining? Two? Are you sure? Three. That's correct. Why do you say three? Yes, there were five, and we have done two. Therefore, three remaining. That's good. It means you are paying attention. Pay attention continually. Now we go to number three. During a week, a student spends two over three of her time in bed. Uh, spends, no, not two over three, a third of her time in bed. Okay? A third in bed, is that all? No, there are others spent. Five twenty-fourths of her time in lessons. And one F of the time solving homework. So there are th three things that she did. She solved homework. Remember she rested in bed. Remember she did some lessons. Three things. But let's do them in order. Resting in bed, lessons, homework. So these three things. Therefore, they are asking us what fraction is left for the girl to use in other things. Once more, we say, let the time for, available for the girl, for the girl, for the girl, the whole time for the girl be one whole number. Everything must be whole number because it is from the whole number that we generated all these fractions. And you remember the definition of a fraction? Part of a whole. That is why we always start from the whole before we start taking the part. So the girl has a whole number. Now, 
total fractions, just to save time, total, total fractions for the three things. What are they? For being, being in bed, loss. Lessons, loss. Homework, home, work, will be equal to. We start fixing the fractions as they told us. But you can see that this involves addition. So after fixing them, we add. The first one was a third. That is what we are told. A third. So we write that for bed, a third plus. What about lessons? Let's see what lessons we have there. Five twenty-fourths plus. What about the one for homework? That of homework we are told is one eighth, one over eight. So these are the three fractions of her total time that are involved in th these three aspects of what she performed. So what do we do here? We now find a least common denominator for the whole three. We now have 3, 24, 8 as the denominators. What is the least common? The least common there is 24. Now, 3 will divide 24 and give us 8, but it must multiply 1, the original numerator of a third. 24 will go there and give us 1, but it must multiply 5 in its original fraction. And 8 will go there to have a 3, which must multiply its corresponding numerator 1. Then we expand now to have 8 plus 5 plus 3. Everything was divided by 24. Then I will say 5 plus 3, 8 plus the first 8. So that will give me 16 over 24. 16 over 24. That is a fraction of the girl's entire um, time that uh, was spent on these three aspects. Then what is remaining would mean we will subtract what we have from the total time available to her. Therefore, time remaining, or rather, fraction. Fraction remaining. Fraction remaining. Fraction remaining will be one whole number, take away 16 all over 24. You see, we are not interested in writing the answer at once. How do they arrive at it? Method. Very, very important. Method. You see, all this while we've been subtracting from one whole number, subtracting from one whole number. So you've got to follow that particular system so that you get used to it. Now, we are going to change this one in terms of the denominator of the fraction that is attached to it. And the denominator there is 24. So Mr. One Whole Number becomes 24 for numerator, 24 for denominator, then minus 16 all over 24. Remember? We have to remind ourselves always. How did he get, excuse me, sir, how did he get this 24? We are saying that the definition of fraction says part of a whole. When you have numerator, less than denominator, you deal with proper fraction. If you have numerator greater than denominator, you deal with improper fraction. But when you have numerator equal to denominator, you are dealing with a whole number. So since the fraction attached to 1 has the denominator 24, the whole number will be determined by that denominator 24. That is why it has become 24 over 24 for the whole number. All right? So based on that now, then we... Combine all the denominators now down to 24, and the numerator will have 24 minus 16. To make life very easy, certain times you want to subtract 16 from 24, it gives you trouble. Why not subtract 16 from 20? If you subtract 16 from 20, what do you have? 4, good. But remember, what we have here is 24, not 20. That means I took 20, leaving 4. 
So I have to add that 4 that is remaining there to the 4. So altogether, I shall have 8. Instead of saying 14 minus 6, and it might give you some trouble. That is the way. So we now write this as 8 all over 24. Aha, Samson. Do we leave it like this? That is our final answer, but do we leave it like this? You say yes. That's serious. Mary, you say no, yes. Okay, if no, what do we do since you say no? We have to reduce it to the lowest term. Because this thing is not stable. So reducing to the lowest term, what can go there? <laughs> David, I know you always, I know you always go, okay, let's hear you. <laughs> Good. You see, David has already seen that 8 can divide 8 and 8 can divide 24. He doesn't want to waste time. So he divides at once. 8 here, 1, 18 to 24, 3. So our final solution is 1 over 3. But you can start dividing with 2. 2 into 8, 4. 2 into 24, 12. 2 will go again. 2 into 4, 2. 2 into 12, 6. 2 will go again. 2 into 2, 1. And 2 into 6, 3. That is a waste of time. That is why I like David. He wants it quickly. So that's the solution for that. Thank you for that, David. And uh, we have done three problems. Remaining how many? Two, okay? You are following. Remaining two. So we can clean this and go to the second one. Go to the second one. And the second one, the second one wants a little bit of your brain in reasoning. He says, are we there? I hope you are listening now. Let's look at this number four. They say a tank, something that contains water. A tank holds 15 liters of water. The capacity of a cup, capacity means ability to hold, ability to contain. So that means the quantity that is inside there is what they are talking about. That of the tank is 15 liters. That of the cup is three-tenths of a liter. Three-tenths of a liter. All right. They are asking us how many cups of water will that tank hold. That means here, this involves division. Total quantity of water inside the tank. You go there, take a cup. Take three tenths, you pour away. Take three tenths, you pour away. How many cups will you take here and pour away until the tank becomes empty? That means how many three tenths of a liter are contained inside 15 liters? So, remember when we were talking about the division, we had divided into and divided by. So you must be very careful how you arrange these things. So that you will not use divided into as if it is divided by. So let's look at that problem once more. Um, that problem says the capacity or total content. Capacity or total content of the tank. Total content of tank is equal to 15 liters. 15 liters. Then, content content of cup is three tenths of a liter. And they are asking us, how many times will 3 over 10 be contained inside there? We say, therefore, number of cups in the tank. That is cups there now. We will then have 15 liters divided by Three tenth liter. That's what it is. 
But since liter is dividing liter, so it will cancel out. Liter will cancel liter. So you'll be having plain numbers. No liter inside it again. In the numerator, liter. In the denominator, liter. They will cancel out. You are dealing with ordinary numbers. So that you don't go there and get answer. You say, write right, 15 cup liter, 15 liter cup. No such thing. Because the liters have already settled themselves. So this is now translated as 15 divided by 3 over 10. You see, I have now removed the liters because they have settled themselves. Then I will give this first one a numerator 1. So that it will look like a fraction. I now have 15 over 1 divided by 3 over 10. Remember we talked about reciprocal. So it will now come into effect. So this is now 15 over 1 times the reciprocal of that. 10 all over 3. We look at that and that gives us 150 divided by 3. Remember I told you multiply out and start reducing. Because certain times when you start cancelling out, you might make some mistakes. Make sure that you have all numerators together at one place. Then the denominators together at one place. Then you start from 2 dividing 3. Then when you have divided by 2 and 3, you shouldn't touch 4. The next number will be 5. You shouldn't touch 6 because 2 and 3 should have settled it. That is the process. So we are now going. 3 here, 1. 3 into 15, 5. 3 into 0, 0. So we have 15 cups. Cups. Not liter cups or cup liters. Because you know the liters have already settled themselves. All right. We know that uh, we are equal to the tax. We have settled with that. So let us take the last one now. Let's take the last one. Let's take the last one. What does the last one say? The last one says, the last one says, um, in a school, nine-tenths of the students play sports. They take part in sports. Nine-tenths take part in sports. That is what they are saying. Nine-tenths take part in sports. And they are saying two-thirds of these people who take part in sports play football. And they are asking us here now, what fraction of the students play football? Fraction. Fraction. Fraction that play, according to the question, play sports. That is how they wrote it, which is a, another way of saying that take part in sports. Fraction that take part in sports. Nine-tenths. 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 That is what they told us there. Nine-tenths. But out of this nine-tenths again, out of this, because this is how the, the sentence went, out of this, they are telling us, out of this, they are telling us that two-thirds play football. Okay? Therefore, fraction that play Play again football. They say it's equal to three tenths. Three tenths. That's what they, they told us there. Fraction that play football is three. Okay, two tenths, rather, two tenths of this. Two tenths of this. Two tenths of this. Two thirds of this, of, of which this, of nine over ten. So that is what they have given us, and then we have to translate that off. Of course, you know what it is. So this now gives us two over three times nine over ten. Matter. Why did we not invert nine over ten? Why didn't we turn it upside down? Reciprocal. Why didn't we do that? Lovely. She says, 
that what we have here is off, not divided by. That's very good. It's only when there is division that we turn it upside down. That's very good. All right. We then multiply this out as 18 all over 30. This is a, pro a proper fraction, quite all right. <laughs> but we'll leave it at this because it's not stable. Then what shall we do? You know what we do? We reduce to the lowest term. I'm thinking of a number that can divide both 18 and 30 without a remainder. Let's take 6 and see. 6 into 18 is 3. Good. 6 into 30 is 5. Can we reduce further? No. Therefore, the final solution there is 3 fifths. That is that. So I give you some two minutes to finish writing so that we can carry on the other aspects that we have for the day. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's move on. Because when we started these fractions, I told you that they have three great grandfathers, the big family to which all of them belonged. And we have now found vulgar fraction. We have treated vulgar fraction very, very well. And um, we want to go to the decimal fraction. And if possible, to the percentages. So that we can easily round up what we have. Decimals. 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 Now, decimals belong to a group of fractions whose denominators are either 10 or powers of 10. I want to repeat. A group of fractions whose denominators are either 10 or powers of 10. I didn't say multiples of 10. Powers thereof. So, you have over 10, the power is 1. Over 100, the power of 10 there is 2. Over 1,000, the power there is 3. Over 10,000, the power is 4. So, 10 and, pa 10 and powers of 10. That is what we are considering as our decimals. Now we have great, we have great um, groups like in the first one here. Types of decimals. We have decimals. If you take the vulgar fraction and start reducing or dividing, you, you couldn't waste time and you come to the end of your division. We call such terminating decimals. But there are those of them that you can continue and the numbers will be disturbing you. We call them non terminating decimals. So, decimal fractions. Whose deno whose denominators are again are ten or powers of ten. And we said it could either be ten raised to the power one, that is the denominator, or ten raised to the power two, or ten raised to the power three. Bum, 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 10 raised to the power n, where n is anything that you are thinking about. So that is what we mean by decimals. Now, these decimals have a starting point. A starting point from which you measure them to the right. And if you measure them to the right, they start becoming smaller, smaller, smaller. Start becoming smaller, smaller, smaller. All right, so that point is called decimal point. That means a point that belongs to Mr. Decimal. Decimal point. From there we go on. However, 
Let us take some examples of what we have now. Let's take examples. Can we change three-fifths? Changing three-fifths to a decimal? Yes. What are we to do here? They say, change this five to ten. That's what they're telling us. So you cannot now really say, what will I use in multiplying five so that it becomes ten? Multiplying five so that it becomes ten. So let's see what we can what can happen. Remember in this case, whatever you do to numerator, you must do it to denominator. I have now said that Mr. 5, if I multiply you by 2, you will become 10. Because I multiplied 5 by 2, I must multiply, must multiply 3 also by 2. So in this particular case, I will be having 6 all over 10. So this is an equivalent fraction. But they say, pick the numerator. And when you pick the numerator, what happens? Attach a decimal point. That may be confusing to some people. So what we have to say is, put that decimal point now behind numerator and also behind denominator. So I'm putting it one there and one there. I have put it. Then make the denominator universal prime. That means let the denominator become one. Okay, so I move this down to one. I will also move this down to the front of six. Because there is no whole number there, I'm attaching a zero. So I will now write my answer as 0 0.6. So that is how decimals are formed. If it is by 100, you know what to do. But certain times, you'll be asking, how do I do this? You'll get worried. So try to get the numerator first. Get the numerator. So I can still solve this problem by saying, Mr. 3 over 5, you are the same thing as a new numerator all over 10 as new denominator. That is what I have written. And we say when we have equivalent fractions, we can cross multiply. Remember, cross multiply is not the same thing as multiply across. Cross multiply means the two fractions you are looking at. Numerator of the first must multiply the denominator of the second. Numerator of the second must multiply the denominator of the first. But multiplying across is you are using a quantity to multiply the first part. Use the same quantity to multiply the second part. They are two different things. Cross multiplication is not the same as multiply across. All right. So cross multiply now. I will now have 5 of Mr. N1 is equal to 3 times 10, which is 30. Therefore, 5 of Mr. N1, I want N1 alone. So I will divide by the number in front of it. And the number in front of a letter, what do we call it? Coefficient. That's very good. Coefficient. Coefficient. So you divide by the coefficient. You divide by the coefficient. So 5 here, 1. 5 there, 1. So Mr. N1 is equal to 6. So that is what N1 is. So we've come back to what we had before, 6 over 10. And then getting this particular 6 over 10, you remember what I told you? So what you have to do, now pick the 6 and put its decimal point in front of it. So this particular thing now, you then write, therefore, 6 over 10 is equal to 0 0.6. The numerator with the decimal attached to it. So let us... Take certain things that we need to do. Before we go into much about these decimals, you have something here that they are going to do at home. Something you will do at home. Very interesting. Before we go on, taking some important parts. Now I'm going to deal with a wonderful fraction. Wonderful fraction. Remember? Fraction, part of a whole. Numerator over denominator. And I told you that if the numerator is smaller than denominator, then we are dealing with 
proper fraction. And if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we're dealing with improper fraction. But if both of them are equal, we're dealing with whole number. So they want to test your idea about all these things that I have said. Please, I'll put it up here in a box form. Take note to this box form. And what is inside the box? It says, try this. That is what it says. Try this. And what am I going to try? X over X minus X over 6 is equal to X over 12. And they say it's wonderful fraction. I'll write it also. One da four fraction. Wonderful fraction. They say, what is X? What is X? I'll give you some few minutes to copy that. You're not going to do it here. you do it at home. Just copy this thing as I've written it. Go try. When you get it, you let us know by posting your solution to the appropriate place. We shall pick it and we shall solve it. All right. We shall take some important notes about decimals. Important notes about decimals. I know you have finished copying that. Thing. Let it not disturb you as, as you do. Let's clean it up. Just three things to write. X over X. That is whole number. Minus X over 4. Which may be an improper fraction or a proper fraction. Is equal to X over 12. Which may be an improper fraction or a proper fraction. They want you to find out. That is a test for you. I wish you luck in getting it. All right. We say important things for us to note about decimals. One, the decimal point separates the whole number portion from the decimal portion. The decimal point separates the decimal portion from the whole number portion. I have something like 78.29. You can see this one here is decimal point. Decimal point. And the 29 there is decimal portion. Decimal portion. For us, this one here, 78 here, is whole number portion. Whole number portion. Certain times, they might want to write only the decimals. They can't write decimal like that without showing its whole number portion. So you can see 0.6. You can't see them write 0.6. Put point and write six. No. What about its whole number portion? Isn't there anything? You must say it. If there is nothing, you say nothing is there. That is why you always hear them say zero point. That means there's nothing in the whole number portion. You just don't write decimal and start going. These are some of the things we need to know about the decimal. Very important. Now, the second aspect is now what I have on the board is 78.29. Immediately after the decimal point, every other digit there is called one by one. But there are many places where you see, sorry to say it, even when people are trying to read their budget, we are budgeting this is point nine hundred and seventy-five trillion. And then some journalist somewhere will say, excuse me, sir, did you say? And they repeat. Please, let's remind ourselves. It is internationally accepted 
that immediately after the decimal point, every other thing written behind it, all the digits should be called one by one. Very, very important. So that we don't continue making mistake until mistake turns around to make us. Now, the other aspect is the first digit. The first digit here stands at the first place of decimal. So these things that we are calling one by one are places, they are called places of decimal. Two is the first place of decimal. Nine, second place of decimal. If there are other numbers like that. So that noted. Another one is um, if the number has only one digit, like here now, I have 78 point two if it has one digit so it has only one decimal place this one here has two decimal places if i have 76.89206 <laughs> do not say that the zero is, is useless it's not useless so it's meaningful because it has come behind two, which is a natural number. All right, so how am I going to call this thing? I'll call it 76. That means 76 is whole numbers. 76 point, listen, point eight nine two zero six. You call them one by one. I will not say that this thing is 76 point. 89,206. No! It's not true. Call them one by one. So, calling them now, I say, how many decimal places has this number here? Count them from the decimal point, not from another place, from the decimal point moving towards the right. Eight is the first decimal, nine is the second decimal place, two in the third, zero in the fourth, six in the fifth. So it has five decimal places. So, I hope that has been noted. Let us also go on. Let's go on. Now, some of these numbers in certain problems, you might be asked, they can write up to 60, they can write up to any number of decimal places. They say, ah, uh -uh, we don't want all of them there. Just give us the answer approximated to they will tell you the number. Approximated to two decimal places. So, in writing, they will write DP. DP means decimal places. So that you will not say that, what is this DP here? The teacher didn't tell us what DP is. It means decimal places. D for decimal, P for places. Now, let's take for instance, I'm given 78 point Two, nine, three. They say, correct this to one decimal place. You first of all ask yourself, how many decimal places are here? Starting from the decimal point to the right, you count. Two is in the first, nine is in the second, three is in the third. But they want only one decimal place. That means from nine to three, they don't want that side. But you must approximate before you throw them away. And how do you approximate, of course, you know, one decimal place, a line immediately after that place where they are talking about. And then you move to the modulator. That modulator is telling you which one to move and which one not to move. Nine is in the upper group, so nine becomes ten. It is moved to the last digit, ten. So zero will be under nine, and one will come over here. But remember, we are stopping at this place where we threw a line because they said one decimal place. So we would simply cancel that side and take this other side. So here we become three, here we become eight, and here we become seven. So this original number, 78.293, has been approximated to one decimal place to become 78.3. You should not throw away the whole number portion. The whole number is retained. We work on the decimal area. That will come under approximation later. All right. So, 
let's still go on. There are certain things very, very important about this, uh, this uh, decimal that we need to work on. Um, let's take the number six to illustrate. And number six has given me here two, three, six. Two, three, six point five, four, seven. Five, four, seven. That is what I'm given. The number we have on the board has three digits of whole number portion and three digits of decimal portion. The first one there, which is the first place, is called tenths. Position tenths. T E N then T H. Tenths. The second one here, the second one here is put hundred. Just write hundred first. Then put the edge. Then this last one here. Put thousand. Thousand. But it must have the edge to show that it's a fraction. So the first one there tenths. Hundreds. Thousands. These things are very, very important. Just like on the left hand side in the primary school. And of course you still do it. Units. Tens and hundreds. So that we can tell the place values. Remember, I, we are talking about first um, decimal place, second decimal place, and so on and so forth. You can talk about places. These things are very, very important for us to take note. Now, let's go to, we mentioned that decimals can be terminating or non-terminating. That is the seventh important fact about our decimal. Terminating and non-terminating. When are they terminating? When if we are dividing out, we can stop at a certain place and the answer comes out. Let's take three fifths. Three. Uh, okay. This is another number. This three fifths, we have used it before. So let's use five eighths. All right. Let's look at this. Can we change this to decimal? Yes. And how do we do it? We divide the numerator by the denominator. So numerator 5 divided by denominator 8. Can 8 really divide 5? Nowhere. So 0. Point. Then you add a 0 here. 8 into 50, that is 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Do your subtraction. Two will remain here. Add another zero. Eight into twenty twice, which is sixteen. Subtract four. Do we stop here? No. Put another zero. Eight into forty five times. Five times eight, forty. So we put a dash, indicating oh, voila, everything has finished. That is why we put a dash. There's nothing remaining to do. So what is our answer? 0 0.625. Not 0 0.625. No. Remember, immediately after the decimal point, everything will be called 1 by 1. So that's that. So this is an example of a terminating decimal. Let us use, uh, take one other example of non-terminating. Non-terminating. This is terminating. Decimal. Terminating. Deci. Decimal. Decimal. It has an end. Even Jesus Christ told us that. Any problem has a solution somewhere. So, it has terminated. It may not terminate now. It may terminate a little bit longer. But it must obviously terminate. Therefore, we have the same thing in decimal. Those that terminate immediately. Those that take some time to terminate. And those that terminate in a wonderful, if at all, they do in a wonderful. We should look at all of them now. This is example of terminating decimal. Terminating decimal. Let's take another example and see what it looks like. Um, I'm looking at 
22 over 7. 22 over 7. You see, the first one we took was 5 over 8, a proper fraction. This one here is 22 over 7. This is an improper fraction. Always divide numerator by denominator. So this is equivalent to 22 has to be divided by 7. And that will give us 3 times there to produce 21. Subtract 1 from that. That will give you 1. Then we can no longer continue, so we add a zero and a decimal point there. Seven into ten, one. One times seven, seven. Then subtract three, add another zero, four. Four times seven, twenty-eight. Okay, two remaining. So add a zero. Then seven into twenty is two, fourteen. If you subtract six into sixty, you have uh, you have seven, okay, eight. Eight times seven is fifty-six. We do a four, put a zero, seven into forty, that is five, five times seven, thirty-five. So, you see, we continue dividing repeatedly until we get tired. This one here is non-terminating decimal. Example of non-terminating non decimal. So, broadly, we have terminating decimals and non-terminating decimals. You can see as this one is going on, it keeps on changing its numbers arbitrarily. There are no repetition of the numbers. But when we have those ones that have repeated numbers, another thing comes in. Another name. We introduce another nomenclature. Let's take another example like 2 over 3. 2 over 3. This is a proper fraction, quite all right. The numerator is 2, put it 2. Let's 3 divide. 3 there cannot, so put a 0 point. Then put 0 there, 3 there, that is 6. 6 times 3 is 18, subtract 2. Ah, put 0, see, another 20 again. Ah, 6, that's 18, subtract 2. Ah, another 20 again. 6. That will give 18. Two remaining. Let's stop here. You see, this one keeps on. The same type of number coming over and over and over again repeatedly. This is called recurring decimal. Recurring decimal. So, we put here, we say that this is equal to 0 0.6 with a full stop on top of it. What are we talking here? We are saying that, saying that this 6 will keep on coming all along. 6, 6, 6. That is why we are putting on its head. Any or again. You on your head, you are the one coming repeatedly. That is recurring decimal at 6. Recurring decimal at 6. Let's take one example and probably we see what we can do about it. One other example. One other example on the recurring decimal. On the recurring decimal. All right, we are finished writing that. So let's go on to this. We are given 5 over 7. Uh huh. Another proper fraction. So 5 there, 7 outside dividing. It is the denominator that divides the numerator. So 7 dividing 5, no way. 0. Point, put a zero. Seven times what? Will be equal to something close to 50 or exactly 50. Let's try Mr. Seven. Seven. Seven times seven, 49. Good. Subtract one. Okay. Seven into 10, one minus seven. So what do we have? Three. Put into 30. So that is four, which gives us 28. Subtract. What do you have? 
2. So, we put that 7 into 20, that is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. So, this is 6 into 60. 7 into 60 is uh, 8. 8 times 7, 56. Subtract 4. 7 into 40 is 5. 5 times 7, 35. Subtract 5. So, we'll put again 7 into 50. Now, look at this 50. Let me circle it. See the original number we were given, that's 50. So you can see, we had 50 to produce 7, 10 to produce 1, 30 to produce 4, 20 to produce 2, 60 to produce 8, 40 to produce 5. And we are having 50 again. That means we are going to repeat all these things. So looking at it now, you find 7 repeats, 1 repeats, 4 repeats, 2 repeats, 8 repeats, 5 repeats, repeatedly like that. So this is also an example of non-terminating. And we call this recurring decimals. Recurring. Recurring. We didn't say reoccurring. Even though the thing is occurring. Not reoccurring. Recurring. So that you don't go and put English language inside prison. All right. We have now seen about the decimal. What we did in vulgar fractions, we repeat in decimals. The whole arithmetic processes of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are involved. Uh, we will take this bit by bit. Let's take, let's take the arithmetic process of addition. Arithmetic process of addition. Arithmetic process of addition of decimals. As I mentioned earlier on, we will follow, we'll follow that way in solving our problems. We now have 2.7 plus 3.8. 2.7 plus 3.8. You can see the first one has one digit in the whole number portion. Second one has one digit in the whole number portion. And so we are going to rewrite this in that way now. We will say that this is equal to 2.7. Then 3 will be under 2. Then 8 will be under 7. You see, first one, one decimal place. Second one, one decimal place. One one decimals will be in the one one decimal positions. Second decimals will be in the second decimal positions. You don't interchange them. Okay, looking at this now, this plus that will give us 15, a 5 here. But the one will come over here. We have reached the decimal point. Put the decimal there. So plus 1. 1 plus 2, that's 3. Plus 3, 6. So... Very easy, just like we do the ordinary numbers. Let's take the next one. We have 15 point 86, 15.86, and we are adding it onto 5.15. 5.15. You see, in the first one, in the first one, the first number has Two digits in the whole number portion, but the second one has only one digit. The, and then in the decimal portion, two digits, this other one, two digits. They agreed in the decimal portion of two, two digits. So, six plus five, that's eleven. One there, plus one there. One plus eight is nine. Nine plus one, ten. A zero there. Decimal we have reached, plus one. Then, under the unit column of the whole number portion, that's where we are adding. This five will not go to the one which is in the tenth tens column. No. 1 plus 5, 6 plus 5, 11. 1. And this one here has plus 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 
So, we follow them place by place. You don't carry another one that belongs to another place and go there. Subtraction in a similar way also. Quickly. Quickly. We want to rush through. We want to rush through. Subtraction follows the same pattern. I have 7.1 minus 3.7. 7.1 minus 3.7. You see, the first number has seven units in the whole number portion and just one unit in the decimal portion. One plus. Here also, three units in the whole number portion and seven in the decimal portion. So each of them has one one on either side. Now we are to Ah, or subtract. All right? We can't take away 7 from 1. No way. We come and move away 1 from that 7 there. But on arrival here, it becomes 10 because we are working to base 10. So we now have 1 plus 10, 11. 11 minus 7, 4. That is what you do. But certain times, it might be very difficult for you to operate that way. This Mr. One that is coming over there, attack him first. So he's the 10 there. 10 take away 7, 3. Plus the one that was there already, 4. That makes it faster and easier for you. Remember we had 7 units there. We've taken away 1. What remains there is 6. 6 take away 3, 3. You can see that there's no problem with this. But suppose there are 2 digits. So let's take that. Another example, 24.11, 24.11. I didn't say 24.11. You know why? Immediately after the decimal point, everything has to be called 1 by 1. Don't forget to minus 14.07, minus 14.07. Right? I can't subtract 7 from 1. So this Mr. 1 here must move and come here and become 10. So 10 take away 7, 3 plus 1, 4. Good. Nothing here. Nothing take away nothing. Nothing. So this has settled. 4 take away 4, nothing. 2 take away 1, 1. So you can see that what we did in the other fraction is the same thing that is operating here. This is ordinary arithmetic of addition and subtraction. What about multiplication? We want to make sure that we finish this aspect. If we can take it down to the division, then we can wait till the next day for the other aspect. All right. Let's go to multiplication. Multiplica multiplication. Multiplication of the decimal. Now let's take an example before we draw a conclusion. We have 38.6. That's what we have there. Multiplied by 1.64. Multiplied by 1.64. When you get to higher classes, you'll be forced to use a particular pattern. But we don't want to go to that so that it will not be uh, causing confusion. We need to express the first fraction, decimal as it is. We want to express it in terms of vulgar fraction. So, point one means one decimal place. We say that first one is 386 divided by 10. Remember the definition of decimal. They say fractions whose denominators are 10 or powers of 10. So one decimal place, the power of 10 there is 1. Two decimal places, the power of 10 there is 2. And 10 raised to the power of 2 means 10 times 10, 100. So this is times 164 all over 100. Ah, this may be confusing. When you look at it, ah, what are they writing? No, 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 no. Don't be bothered at all. Don't be bothered at all. So this is what we do. This first one here is equivalent to 38.6 um, over 1 
times 1.64 over 1. Is that all right? No problem. You can see it's still the same thing. If any number divided by 1 remains what it is. Now, we want to make the numerator a whole number. So we move the decimal point down to the last point. And because you did that, this one, its own decimal point, we move one step again. So inside there, will be replaced with zero. The same thing here, making it a whole number. This will move two times, one, two, and come here. So the decimal of this will move two times as well, one and two, to come there. So these places will be replaced with zeros because there are nothing inside them. That's how we arrived at this, so that it doesn't confuse you. All right. You will use long multiplication to save time. Uh, to save time, we wouldn't go to, but you use long multiplication. You have six, three, three, um, oh, four, zero, four, six, three, three, zero, four. That's what we have. For the numerator, then what about the denominator? One. How many zeros are involved? One, two, three. We put the three zeros. One, two, three. Now, remember it's decimal that they gave you. They didn't give you a vulgar fraction. So return to your decimal. How are you returning to the decimal? Attach the decimal points at the end of what you have done now. So four, decimal. Zero, decimal. Make the denominator universal prime. That let it be one, as we did before. Let it be one. So how many steps do I make the denominator to become one? One, two, three. One. So all over one. What you did to denominator, go back and do it to numerator. You also have one, two, three. So this now becomes 63.304. Any number divided by one remains what it is. Therefore, our final answer here is 63.304. So, that's that. Um, our time is fast spent. Fast spent. We'll leave the division. Because the division involves two aspects. Divided into and divided by. So I want us to leave that the next time. So we take division in decimals and move over to percentage. But you can't go without having something to write. To. Don't mind that I gave you something before. I will give you another small, interesting, little, important something. Interesting, little, important Something. That's what I want to give us now. Um, a small assignment. Find the sum of the following. Sum. Number one. Sum of the following. What are they? The first one is 3.67. 3. 3. 0.67 and another thing 5.4 be very careful each of them has one one unit in one one digit in the whole number portion this is three the other one is five but in their decimal portions they are not having the same this has two this has one so UYB. I hope you know what UYB is. Use your brain. UYB. Use your brain. So very, very important. Then B. What do we have in B? B there says 24.8. 24.8 and 8.8. That's good though, 24.8 and 8.8. .8. Then number two. What is the difference between? Number two, difference. Difference. Between. Onye and Onye. Difference between Mr. A. Let's see what the, the numbers are. 
Mr. A, difference between 59.2, 59.2, and, and who? 59.2, and, and 14.6, uh, 14. Point six. That is for A. What about Mr. B? Mr. B has it this way. 60, 61.34. 61.34. And the corresponding brother. 61.34. And 20, 25. And 22.42, please. 22.42. 22.42. Then number three. Number three. You might say that the assignment is too much. Yes. It's not too much. It's just to help you practice. Because that is what they told us. That practice makes for perfection. If you don't practice these things that we are talking, they might be very interesting to you, but because of lack of practice, when they bring it sometime, somehow, when un unexpectedly to you, you start talking German. Number three, find the product of. Product of. Product. Remember, when we were doing word problems, we saw these words, and they are coming again. Product of. Find the product of A, A, 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 and 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. Then the second aspect of is 2.75 B. 2.75 and and who? Let's see. 2.75 and 11.6 and okay, 1.6 please, 1.6. Now we wouldn't go to the division aspect. Remember I told you it will involve it will involve it will involve divided into and divided by, which we did the other time. We need to stress it a little bit before we can carry on. That is why we are stopping here. See you. See you. See you again. And good luck.